All right. Well, welcome to the first ever Westminster Live devotional. Um, thank you, Vince, and the technology team for, uh, and Alex, and everyone for getting this set up. Um, I am one of those long-winded voice message leavers, uh, those people that keep talking until the beep goes, because I'm waiting for some feedback or some interaction. And given the fact that I can't see you or hear you, uh, I may go on and on. So just type in beep if I go too far here in your uh, chat room. Um, but I want in our devotion this morning to uh, recall and go back to what Larry said in his sermon on Sunday. Uh, he had a list of things that he suggested that we do coming out of the Anton Slugger text. And one of those was that we need to rely, reinstate, or perhaps initiate for the first time the practice of personal prayer, making intercession for ourselves, for people close to us, for healthcare workers, our nation, its leaders, our world and its leaders, and for our neighbors near and far. And in observing my rhythms this week, uh, the reality and the, the struggle that how often it is that the thing we most need to do uh, is hardest to do when we most need to do it. Uh, and that's true of prayer in the midst of all of this disruption. Um, our rhythms, our patterns are off. Um, and our attention is consumed by uh, our family members and our loved ones uh, trying to keep up with our, our work and our communities uh, and also with the life of the church. And thanks to each of you as elders uh, who are trying to do that in this new way. Uh, so I'll just confess that my own devotional rhythm is way off right now. Um, but I'm also seeing uh, and I've seen in the life of the church already in this last week how disruption can provide an opportunity, an opening, a new thing to emerge. Uh, and that's been very much true at a staff level uh, and in our worship, again, with the aid of our uh, technology team. Uh, we're doing things in a new way uh, and trying new, new ways of reaching one another and, and being a community. Uh, the deacons are reorganizing the way they provide ministry to seniors and the vulnerable in our community. Um, and in your own family lives, you're adjusting <laughs> uh, some, some moments better than others. Uh, well, we're going to talk about how the Psalms orient us, or they take us from where we're, we're a place of orientation uh, through places of disorientation and into places of reorientation. Uh, and that movement can occur uh, in our life of prayer. Um, so I want to do something, and I want to just test a little bit too. Uh, some of you may know I've been teaching a class on Calvin, um, and I thought, well, why don't we see what Calvin says about prayer uh, to aid our personal prayer? And so I'm just going to have five quick points uh, from Calvin and his institutes. So forgive me, I'm just going to do this here. There we go. Hopefully you can see that. Um, that's a picture of John Calvin. Most pictures of John Calvin have him looking very dour and serious. Uh, this is the one image out there where he looks reasonably hopeful. Um, so I've been using that, that picture a lot in my class. Um, Calvin just has a very high view of prayer and its importance. Um, it's vital. He writes about it perhaps more than any other single topic in his institutes. Um, and uh, you can see here what he says, that uh, it is not without cause that our Heavenly Father and he uses very exclusively male language, but uh, our Heavenly Father declares that our only safety is calling upon his name, since by it we invoke the presence of his providence to watch over our interests, of his power to sustain us when we are weak and almost fainting, of his goodness to receive us into favor, though miserably loaded with sin, in fine or in total, call upon God to manifest himself to us in all his perfections. Um, and he has, and I've taken somewhat out of context here or there, he has some points about prayer. He does list some things, and I've taken some of those. I want to go through five just quickly. Uh, Calvin believes that when we pray, we should have our heart and mind framed as becomes those who are entering into converse with God. Uh, he says, do not be distracted uh, by wandering thoughts. And I think that's really hard right now for us where we are. Um, most of us are at home. There's no quiet spaces. Um, and we're just moving around a lot and we're distracted. Uh, 
and Calvin acknowledges that. He acknowledges how difficult it is to pray without being distracted and, and how hard it is to pray as though we're actually talking to the maker of the universe, the sustainer, the redeemer. Um, but he says we ought to labor the more earnestly, the more difficult we experience it to be. Um, to paraphrase Calvin, I think he would urge us to approach our life of prayer with a little bit of fight in us, uh, to claim time to pray, uh, to not let it slip away. Um, there's been a lot of talk of self-quarantining or self-containing. Uh, maybe we can reframe that word to mean we're going to quarantine uh, a moment of our day to, to be in contact with God and God alone uh, in our prayers. Calvin also says that in asking, we must always truly feel our wants and seriously considering that we need all the things which we ask, accompany the prayer with a sincere, no, a, an ardent desire for obtaining them. Uh, Calvin doesn't have much time for prayers that are wrote, uh, that are done sort of out of a sense we need to appease God or that the outcome of our prayers are primarily dependent on us. He urges us to pray with the vehemence of desire, uh, to pray like we mean it. And you'll note that he distinguishes there between needs and wants. Uh, so he, he, he asks us, he, Calvin would consider us that we need to pray for uh, that which is truly uh, vital for our living and for the life of those that we care about. Related to that, we should pray in our, and be animated in our prayer to pray with the sure hope of succeeding. Calvin says that those who approach God with a doubting, hesitating mind, without feeling assured whether they are not, whether they are heard or not, gain nothing by their prayers. Uh, we remember what Jesus said in Matthew uh, chapter six: "Ask, and it will be given you; search, and you will find; knock, and the door will be opened for you." So Calvin would uh, not approach prayer as a hedging of our bets. Uh, we've often heard, or you may have heard the expression that we ought to pray as though everything depended on God and live and work as though everything depended on us. Uh, Calvin would uh, call that out and say, no, you pray as though everything depended on God and then your living will reflect uh, the, the level of action that the saying would urge us to, to, to live into. Um, now, if you look at these three, those are high bars for prayer. Uh, and this, this happens throughout Calvin's Institutes where he sets a high bar for what we are to do as Christians. But then he, he seeks to assure us that our prayers, our, our living, depend on no merit of our own, but all their worth and hope of success are founded and depend on the promises of God so that they need no other support. So we approach this with humility uh, we really turn ourselves and our lives over to God, uh, and, we, and we do so with awareness of our own sin and our broken nature, and of course, uh, we know that Calvin has a lot to say about that, and uh, his point being that it, it really is God's work, uh, and this is true of our prayer as well, that we are not saved on our own, but we are saved entirely uh, by God. Uh, and so, related to that, and the last point is that we approach God securely confiding that with Christ for our intercessor, nothing which we ask in his name will be denied to us, as there is nothing which God can deny to him, to Christ. This gives us hope. This gives us a courage in our praying, that we're not trying to reach and live up to a bar that we on ourselves could not reach on our own, but we actually participate in Christ's prayers. Uh, and would God deny Christ? that which Christ prays. And you think of Christ on the cross saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And, and the answer to that is the, the, the empty tomb. Um, there's a sense that since no man is worthy to stand in the presence of God, we begin on a Christ uh, to be our mediator and advocate. Uh, there's a great quote by Ambrose that Calvin quotes, that Christ is the mouth by which we speak to the Father, the eye by which we see God the Father and the right hand by which we offer ourselves to God. Um, and so because we have Christ interceding for us, we ought to intercede and pray for one another. So 
Those are five points on Calvin for prayer uh, to attach to Larry's admonition for prayer. Uh, I love the fact that we're using a new medium to to unearth older voices, uh, and I hope that maybe it helps you and helps me in our praying. Um, just a practical suggestion in terms of your own prayers, uh, that the Psalms are a great place to go. Uh, Calvin called the Psalms the, uh, the, the whole collection, the anatomy of our soul, uh, and no better guidebook, he believes, uh, for how we can pray than, than is to be found in the Psalms. Uh, so to close our devotion today, uh, I'm going to have us pray the third psalm. Um, and I just have to move my window so I can see it myself. Um, and remembering Calvin's sort of five points on prayer, to pray as though we're actually talking to God and to try to settle our distracted minds, uh, to pray um, out of our sense of need and how we feel. Uh, and to pray that we believe God is hearing us and will answer our prayers and provide that which we need. Uh, and to know that our praying does not ultimately depend on us. Its outcomes do not depend on us. Um, and that we pray in Christ. Uh, I invite us all to now share in this prayer. Uh, and uh, I invite you to speak it out loud. I believe you're all on mute right now. Um, that's fine. Do it at home. And we will pray this together. So let us pray. O oh Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. Many are saying to me, there is no help for you in God. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. I cry aloud to the Lord, and he answers me from his holy hill. I lie down and sleep. I wake again, for the Lord sustains me. I am not afraid of tens of thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Rise up, O Lord. Deliver me, O my God. For you strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. May your blessings be on your people. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay, hopefully you see me now. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, I believe we'll be back on Monday morning uh, at this time, 8.30, uh, and uh, the wider congregation can join, and perhaps some of them are watching this now. I believe this will be taped and available later. So uh, I would say it's good to see you, but I don't see you. <laughs> so uh, I'm glad to be with you, uh, and may God's grace and God's peace be with you today in your homes and in all you do. And may God be with us in our world as we, uh, as a community uh, globally, uh, respond to this crisis. Amen.